Okay, I've got hopefully a brief video for you all today. It's something that I've been sitting on for a while and I just need to get it out there because I accidentally discovered something that unlocked a whole world of nearly lost Scooby-Doo media that is weirdly important. So at the start of this year, Em and I moved from our apartment to this house. And in the process of that, I got to design an actual space to film videos in compared to the kitchen where I had been previously filming stuff. And since I've been making more and more Scooby-Doo videos over the last couple of years, and my ideal interior design style is any old person's house from American Pickers, I went searching for some antique Scooby decor on eBay and Etsy. And that's where I found this. This is a Scooby-Doo audio story produced by Peter Pan Records in 1977. They are stories that were intended for children to read along to with the included book. Every time you're supposed to turn the page, it'll make a sound like this or like this. Where is this included book? Not included, at least not with my eBay purchase. If you did buy this back in the day new, I suppose it would probably come with one, but the story will just have to be a surprise as we dust off our extremely professional record player that no one has ever left angry comments about and listen in on this forgotten adventure. Let's begin now on page one with the title of our story, Scooby-Doo and the Mystery of the Sticky Money. So the first thing you'll notice is that the music here is not from any other Scooby-Doo property because reportedly it's from stock music libraries. It shows, honestly, because it's way too upbeat without any mystique to it. But more importantly, I want to play you a clip that happens around the 90 second mark on the very first disc. And I want to see if you notice something. Hi, I'm Special Deputy Jones. My partner Smith and I came to warn you not to go down that trail to the woods. Counterfeiters are hiding out there. Real bad guys. Uh-huh. That's why Mystery Incorporated is here. The Rangers called us to help solve the mystery of the counterfeit money, and we're just starting out this morning. Did you catch that? And no, I'm not talking about how Fred and the Ranger have the same last name and no one brought it up. Velma referred to their group as Mystery Incorporated. In 1977... Do you want to know the first time any animated Scooby outing referred to the gang as Mystery Incorporated? 1998 with Zombie Island, 21 years after this. Mystery Inc. is back in business. Now, as far as I can tell, this is not the first time the gang was referenced as Mystery Inc. There was a 1973 British LP called Scooby-Doo and the Snowmen Mystery that starts with this song. Which is funny because, no they don't, no one calls you that. This is the first time we're hearing about this. Also, the voice cast for this record is atrocious. I don't know if the actors are British, but at the very least, they were given the direction to do what British people think all Americans sound like. This is what they did for Shaggy. Come on, boy. Cheer up. We're going on a lovely plane trip and a grand holiday. Shaggy will take care of me, won't you, Shaggy? Sure thing, Scoobs. But we're not talking about that album today, even though it would be more thematically appropriate. I didn't think ahead. We're talking about this one, which has much better voice acting because they used the actual cast who was playing the gang on TV at this time. Don Messick plays Scooby and is also the narrator of the story. Hello, boys and girls. Well, I'm afraid of monsters. Frank Welker continues to be the one true Fred. We came to solve a mystery and we won't go home until we do what we came for. Heather North and Pat Stevens had taken over the roles of Daphne and Velma respectively at this point as well. So Oh, this is where he was last seen. And her. Don't forget those roars in the night. So, it's fun that they're all here. And of course, you know, Casey Kasem at... What did you find, Scooby? Oh, no. Scooby found a giant paw print back there! No, 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 no. That's how I feel! Yeah, so this is obviously not... Casey Kasem as Shaggy. He wasn't available for whatever reason to record these records, even though he loved the character of Shaggy. Instead, Shaggy was voiced by Duncan Robertson, who, as far as I can tell, only voiced Shaggy for these records and nothing else. In fact, I couldn't find any other acting work that Duncan Robertson ever did other than this, which only makes the preservation of these stories even more vital. Is it my favorite Shaggy voice? 
I can tell you it's not my least favorite. This really is a dog's life. Besides, that hardly matters. This could be this one actor's entire portfolio of work, and they voiced one of the most iconic characters of the era. And while there have been other people who have uploaded recordings of these discs online already, I wanted to help with archiving them. I mean, I already have the equipment necessary to rip the raw audio off of the vinyl grooves into cyberspace. There's just... One problem, though. Look, gang, there's a shack over there. It's a witch's house. Mm -hmm, no, now you know we can't keep standing Go inside and get drunk. I'll think it looks all right. I'll call. With me, Fred. Good idea. Yeah, my copy of this record was, uh, well-loved, you could say. Someone even drew a little picture of a house on the inside of a sleeve. I don't know if you can see that. I love finding this sort of stuff. I mean, these records, as I said, were intended for children and seeing little doodles like that, it, I don't know, it just makes me feel like I'm peering into the past, reliving the childhood of someone who by now is much older than me because I'm young and cool and definitely not in my 30s. But it does mean this record was so scratched and warped that clearly whatever small child this belonged to wasn't a true audiophile. Unlike me, remember? Only the, only Crosley's finest record player. <laughs> so yeah, this record skips, as you heard. It, it's pretty bad. It, it's actually unlistenable, and without the book that it was supposed to come with, I have no idea what this story is actually supposed to be on here. And there are actually three stories included on here, not just one, which is helpful because now I have the titles that I can look up. And wouldn't you know it, given those titles, a dirty little Google shows us what they would have looked like. And I know what you're thinking. Is this the part of the video where Scott logs onto eBay and buys a whole bunch of old media but no, that's later, because I initially was confused. This book was published in 1975, two full years before this record. How can that be? Well, upon further research, and by that I mean looking over Scoobypedia, where more dedicated fans than myself have already documented this history, Scooby-Doo has had several children's books published by Rand McNally from 1975 to 1977, and conveniently, they compiled all of them, asterisk, into one beautiful big boy book called Hanna-Barbera's Favorite Scooby-Doo Adventures. So officially, officially, these are the company's favorite Scoob stories, and now I have them, and they're mine. And presumably because these stories are their favorites, they exist not only in book form, but in record form as well. Yeah, this is the part of the video where I buy a bunch of old media. I told you it was gonna happen later, I just didn't say how much later. It basically instantly. <laughs> it's also why I've been saying records plural up to this point, rather than just the one big one. These four are obviously 45s instead of 33s, like this one, and they each have one story on each disc, whereas the 33, fittingly, as I said earlier, is crammed with three stories on this big guy. But the most important part is that these don't skip. There's definitely some damage, sure, but again, these are intended for children who aren't known for their coordination or gentle handedness, but the full stories are here, ripped from the pages of the Rand McNally books, word for word. Eeny, meeny, miny, moo, I'm going to get Scooby Doo. No, not me. Hello? <laughs> Well, word for word, except for the titles, weirdly. I don't know why, but they changed the titles of each of the stories for these records, and it makes them sound like off-brand versions of the book. Yeah, hi, I would like uh, Scooby-Doo and the Headless Horseman, please. I'm so sorry, we only carry Scooby-Doo and the Mystery of the Rider without a head. Is that okay? And before you think that maybe they only changed this one because Headless Horseman might be a copyrighted monster somewhere, uh, they changed every title of every story. It's not Scooby-Doo and the Haunted Doghouse, it's Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Mystery of the ghost in the doghouse. It's not Scooby-Doo and the mystery monster, it's Scooby-Doo and the mystery of the strange paw prints. The list goes on exactly one more time because I only have four of them. Case of the counterfeit money is now mystery of the sticky money. There were other Peter Pan records released in 1977, one called Scooby-Doo and his friends and another called Exciting Christmas Stories with Scooby-Doo and friends, which again would have been more thematically relevant to this time of year had I thought about it ahead of time. But I don't have that one and I don't want to spend any more money right now. In fact, I have a confession. I never spent money on this first record either. I posted about it online and some anonymous fan bought it for me without a note 
or anything. So thank you to whoever you are. And I hope you're cool with the fact that I'm going to make sure no one else has to pay money to listen to these stories either. Right now on my second channel, I've uploaded a playlist of each story in full for anyone to listen to whenever you want, complete with a cozy video visual. Because as I've said so many times throughout this video, these stories are intended for children. Some little kid drew a house on the inside of this record sleeve. The book of favorite Scooby-Doo adventures I bought used has a page at the start showing that it was a gift from a mom to her two children, Stephen and Brian in 1980, those nerds. And my favorite detail is how the books that came with the records show how presumably a parent or teacher underlined words that have an emphasis to further help a child understand that subtle part of language. We're very stubborn. That's how I feel. I think it's after me. I know it's after me. Just ignore the part where they make Shaggy say yoiks and not zoinks. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Yoiks. This is why I love buying used media. There's a story literally printed on these pages and recorded on those records, but there contain other unwritten stories in them too. They're just fun <laughs> and I want to make sure that parents can continue to share them with their children or obnoxious Scooby fans like me can check it off the list of content we've consumed like animals. I'll work on proper captions for these videos as well to make sure they are as accessible as possible and I've tried to clean up the audio on the records as best as I can as well but if you want the raw untouched recordings I've uploaded those to archive.org for any audio technician who wants to try their hand at remastering them. All of the links will be in the description. I've been making Scooby-Doo videos for a few years now, and I just think it's a great community to be a part of. So I'm excited that I get to give back in this small way. And again, I'm not the first person to upload these to the internet, and there's still a few stories that I need to track down. But maybe now they'll mention me on Scoobypedia. Make me canon to the Scoobverse. That's what this video is really about. I'm selfish. Hey, so this year has been not great, uh, especially the last few months. But in the face of it all, I, I do have a lot of stuff that I am personally thankful for. And if you're like me, you like to end each year by giving back a little bit to make sure that next year is better for others. The problem is there are over one and a half million nonprofit organizations in the United States alone, and there are millions more around the world. So how do I know, how do you know, which ones can make the biggest impact with your donation? That's a question that a lot of folks come to, and it can even stop you in your tracks from making a donation to a charity altogether. Decision fatigue or analysis paralysis, whatever you want to call it. Thankfully, today's sponsor, GiveWell, was founded specifically to help donors with this exact question. They pour over independent studies and charity data to help donors direct their funds to evidence-backed organizations that are improving and even saving people's lives. I mean, this is raw data. Look at this. It's sexy. GiveWell has now spent over 15 years researching charitable organizations. That's half the time I've been alive. And they only direct funds to a few of the highest impact opportunities they've found. I'm going to hit you with some numbers because, again, it's data. It's sexy. Over 100,000 donors have used GiveWell to donate over a billion dollars with a B. That's more money than the human mind is capable of comprehending. And rigorous evidence suggests that these donations will save over 150,000 lives. And again, that's just the lives that these donations will save. They'll also improve millions more. I told you I was going to hit you with some good numbers. GiveWell wants as many people as possible to make informed decisions about their charitable giving. Heck, that's what I want too. <laughs> and you want to know the best part? Well, I mean, the best part is saving lives and improving lives. But you want to know a different other good part? You can find all of their research and recommendations on their website for free. It's not paywalled. It would be wild if it was. From there, you can make your tax-deductible donations to the charities that they suggest. And guess what? GiveWell does not take any portion of your donation. But they will give you a little smile. Like... Yeah. 
proud of you. I actually can't promise that thing about the smile, but something that I do appreciate about GiveWell is how transparent they are with their research process on how they identify their top charities and which ones they're looking into next, as well as having a page dedicated to their missteps along the way. I think it speaks highly of an organization that they don't try to hide the things that they've needed to work on and that you don't have to simply take their word for anything. Their research is open for you to look at right now for free. And that personally makes me feel very confident in using GiveWell, and I think you will be too. And you know what? One last fun thing. If you have never donated to GiveWell's recommended charities before, now's the perfect time to start because you can have your donation matched up to $100 before the end of the year or as long as matching funds last. So to claim your match, go to GiveWell.org and select YouTube and go ahead and enter NerdSync at checkout so that they know that you heard about them from me. Scott NerdSync, my legal name. Don't write Scott in the thing. Just It's just NerdSync, though, is the code to get your donation matched. I made this way too confusing. All the info is going to be in the description. Don't, just ignore me. Again, just head over to GiveWell.org to donate or find out more. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. What a good one to end the year on. Thanks for watching. Maybe next year, now that I'm thinking about it, I will do all the Christmas themed Scooby audio stories, including the full British one. And we can actually like listen to them and talk about them and have like a whole essay about them. And I hope it's okay that I didn't like go through the story of each one. I just thought it would be fun to share how I found them and the sort of rabbit hole it opened for me of just researching where they came from and the stories behind them. Um, anyway, I think that's it. <laughs> Happy holidays. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.